great session. So we do have a session with Mr. Ajay Sharma, who's the uh, managing director and CEO of Badinath. That's another homegrown brand, which after COVID is doing even better because immunity health has become so important for everyone. So Salil, let me start by asking you what has changed in the last two years when it comes to businesses and hence what does marketing need to do to be able to come up to the expectations of consumers? So, um, yeah, a lot has changed uh, in the last two years. Uh, the, the big shift that has happened is what they buy to how they buy. So that's the biggest shift I would say uh, if there is one shift that one I have to put my finger on. And that's very, very important for every business and uh, business person and marketeer. And what I mean by it is what they buy, earlier all the companies and brands were focusing on creating a very differentiated portfolio. Um, people trying to come up with nice products, people trying to come up with uh, looking at the white spaces in the product portfolio, their product portfolio, and offering it to the consumer. But what, in, what happened in the last two years is the entire focus has shifted to how they buy. And how they buy is not um, um, only limited to the final purchase. It's right from the beginning, the search, the, the consideration, the comparison. It's the whole nine yards. After that, the buying, actual buying, how it happens, uh, the experience of delivery, and then the post-delivery, if it's a product like ours, installation, and then the instant feedback, which you know goes back to the brand. So that entire cycle, that entire loop has become very, very critical because the consumers have become very, very tech savvy in the last two years. We've seen a rush on technology, and that shifted the focus as far as businesses are concerned from trying to create differentiated products, actually trying to, I would say it is a, it is a fight for survival. All the new businesses which have come up in the last few years are not on very highly differentiated products. They're more on the, the new purchase behavior of the consumer, which is highly digital centric. Absolutely. And Mr. Kapoor, you started your career in consumer durables. Then you went to media. Then you launched the OTT platform much ahead of the current OTT gold rush. Then you are back into consumer durables. You join one large venerable brand and then you joined Orient Electric in the last few years. Now, we talked of the t term Soho, you know, or the SOPO, depend, you know, you can call whatever, but basically searching information online, but buying offline. However, the beauty about the last two years is while online grows, offline is equally important and growing. How do you explain the fact that both of these are growing? Online is growing. And when it comes to Orient Electric, uh, you may not want to give specific numbers, but when it comes to Orient Electric, how has your D2C or your e-commerce play got fortified post-pandemic? So two parts to the question. Uh, I would say that offline has really not grown as online has grown. And I'm not talking about the actual sales and online sales versus offline sales. I'm talking about the entire process of purchase. The, uh, and it's not new, we all know when consumers, they step into an offline store, they look at a model or they look at a, any product. They actually s go online to look at the information about. So the, the search about the product, the reviews about the product, everything is happening online. So I would say the pre-purchase, all that stuff was happening, which was, a, which was called word of mouth, it's now word of digital actually. So that entire thing has shifted drastically to digital rather than being offline. And then comes the actual purchase. Actual purchase can happen off online and offline, but we've definitely seen, most of us, huge shift towards online as well. And then within online, there are two parts. One, you, you have aggregators, and then you have this, the entire new of D2C brands which have come up, and all the existing brands also creating their own D2C, uh, which is like their own own shop, in, in, in your digital shop, you can say. The, the, the ease with which you can go direct is, is, uh, is really, has really changed. So you have the whole stack available. There's a Shopify, there's a Shiprocket, and there's a payment gateway, and you understand all those two, three things, you put them together, the entire stack, and you go online. So I think um, brands have realized this fact. Uh, they, have, they understand that the consumer is 
highly digital centric now. She searches, she evaluates, she looks at the reviews, she goes through the entire digital journey before she decides to buy, what to buy and where to buy and that purchase can happen offline and online. But the initial journey, initial part of the journey is definitely much, much more digital. Uh, as far as we are concerned, yes, we are also in a process of putting a D2C, uh, uh, you know, own setup. But I think within the overall picture of e the existing brands, the aggregator piece is much, much bigger as compared to D2C right now. And Salil, if I may ask, I see you advertising big time on television. And I recently read an article about 45 days back, so not in the Harvard Business Review, which said uh, it was a beautiful article. I sent it to some of my media owner friends, and it said how in the US, uh, mainstream media is coming back with a vengeance. The budgets on mainstream media are, are coming back in a big way there. So uh, online is growing, there's no question about that, but online has, the price has become very, very uncompetitive. Uh, second is there is a lot of online fraud. You know, there's a wastage, uh, and hence, a lot of large brands are going back to television advertising, newspaper, radio, outdoor. They have shifted their budgets from online to mainstream media. And I see Orient Electric uh, doing TV advertising. What is your uh, view, uh, being at the helm of affairs at Orient Electric, in terms of how brand building in media has got impacted in the last two years? Mainline media, uh, traditional media, legacy media, whatever you call it, has always been there. So if you look at our own homegrown uh, digital brands, uh, nobody can miss that they really went big uh, on TV, uh, be it one of the largest payment platforms or be it one of the largest ad tech companies. They're all digital brands. Not only they're digital brands, they're setting up offline retail. So the ad tech brand, if I get, I know what you, they're setting up B2, see physical counseling centers yeah. and other edutech brands are also setting up physical centers so you know while you talked about physical retail not growing there is a touch and feel in this country which is not going to go out of fashion that soon so uh, uh, this is not going to be the digital part versus the physical part it is going to be omni channel and the degree of it will vary category to category, product to product, industry to industry. I think the marketers will understand it. They already do. And their understanding will increase over a period of time when they have data in their hands where the interaction and where the conversion is happening much faster. Uh, that will decide which way they will go. But both the, both the forms and both the offline and online will coexist. Uh, coming back to your early quest earlier question that uh, will it be TV or how it's TV versus how the brand building is. I think TV in India still has that scale. It gives you that kind of a scale. Um, and, and digital gives you more of customized interaction and engagement. Personalization. Yeah. So that the, what you get out of each medium is different depending on what you want, to, what is the objective that you have. If you want to go splash across all the TV screens and do a burst, then it is more a TV thing. Depends on what is the marketing objective. If you want to build up the engagement and it's more gradual, you, you can't do bursts on, on, on digital. That doesn't work. And long-term brand building on digital, that also one may question. Yeah. And I'm not saying, of course, digital has to be part of the plan, a large. But again, there are lots of studies saying, um, and forget the studies. Look at all the unicorns, they spend money on IPL and TV advertising during IPL. So clearly TV is not going anywhere, right? Uh, but tell us some things that we haven't still noticed or which are very small in terms of trends, which are going to become bigger and bigger in the next few months, few years. So I think there are, there are niches to look at as far as media is also concerned. Uh, a recent example, uh, what I can quote is, there's a, there's a, there's a service called MyGate. Uh, they, they try to integrate into all the high rises and they have a penetration in a lot of uh, apartment complexes across the country. Now, it is essential for every resident out there to have that because that's how you welcome your guests or you, they let you get your guests or anybody who's visiting you. 
you by default on the screen of your consumer and then you start pushing the products so that kind of a stuff where you get a entry which is a backdoor entry into the consumer's screen and mind share and then start pushing the products that's a that's a new one the other one which is also coming up is the digital oh so you know forget the standard out of home that we have seen all the screens which are being put at various offices restaurants and apartments imagine all of them connected somewhere with a common service and at one go you have one campaign or one ad or one product showing across the country in all those areas now these are the new things which will develop and i think technology can um, you know help us scale any small thing to whatever level that we want to uh, this is the kind of a personalization this is a kind of scale that can be built up with help of all these new things which are coming out of the picture so all the old traditional media will also get digitized so I, i'm actually wondering when will we have the roadside out of home uh, across the country lit up one day showing one particular brand on every road that will be the kind of a uh, new thing which somebody centrally will control it so so this is something that we are going to see now coming up and i think a lot of people are working on such things now let me ask you uh, you worked across sectors how are leaders business leaders and i said marketing is about growth and marketing is business you know if marketing creates growth then marketing is business tell me what are leaders doing to be able to make themselves relevant in this post pandemic scenario uh, it's been a it's i think it's been a tough journey for all businesses in last two years uh, there have been multiple challenges uh, whenever the demand is high there were supply chain issues and for whichever sector there was no demand uh, they had some other issues of survival so i think all the businesses uh, were trying to cope up with one or the other challenge i haven't seen any business which said that we did not have any challenge so if the demand like you know last two years the consumers have really focused on themselves and their homes be it their education be it their looks be it their uh, uh, what they needed in their house to you know improve the house so most of the stuff went there and now when things have opened up most of the stuff has shifted towards travel and other experiences because they they didn't step out for a long time so wherever they went there there has been a supply chain challenge for whatever has been going across the world in last two years on the other side there have been businesses which were totally challenged because things were shut down and uh, whichever were more dependent on the physical presence those businesses didn't happen so mostly uh, you know the biz uh, i don't want to mince the words but i think it's been a survival issue for all the businesses across the world so people are trying to all the leaders are trying to cope up understand and then within this there's been a big shift of consumer uh, the way she buys the way she interacts with the brand the way she wants the brand to attend her that thing has also shifted uh, more digital so uh, it, it wouldn't be wrong to say that the marketers and the business leaders are actually coping up the customer is evolving faster than the businesses thought it would and salil the average age of ceos and cmos across the corporate india is coming down um, now i'm not saying people like you and me don't understand digital uh, but there are people who were born digital natives right and clearly their appreciation of what is happening in that space is better than us is that a fair uh, comment to make that depends on the lear learning capability of, of course all it the does, but business by leaders, and large adaptability so what 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 are when leaders are hiring when you are hiring a cmo or a brand manager uh, what are you looking at in them which in some way brings the basics but also is able to bring skills that the ceo may not have so what are the skills that you are looking at in a brand manager today or in a cmo that you possibly didn't look at 6 years back 8 years back 10 years back so so clearly the digital component uh, or digital quotient if you want to call it that's become very very critical uh, it doesn't matter uh, the age actually it doesn't matter why because uh, people can have different interests at different points of time but yes definitely the digital native as we call them uh, that generation certainly has an edge because they're actually using the product see the, the learning comes more from the using of the usage of the product so i think all the marketers the cmos uh, it's no longer just a cmo it's a cdmo so you know you have a digital angle uh, which is thrown in 
and that's very critical for your understanding because that's how you're going to engage with the consumer so if you don't know how the consumer engages with your product with your brand uh, then it's going to be a tough one so i think that component of the overall capability has definitely grown in, in terms of uh, share within the overall capability of the individual my last question before i take two audience questions so keep your questions ready if you have any for mr kapoor and i'll bring you in to ask the question salil if you have to make three predictions for the future what would those be especially in the context of business and marketing uh, if we met 12 to 18 months from now what would have happened uh, give us three trends even if you don't want to call them predictions so uh, uh, what is happening already will further gain momentum uh, however uh, we will see much more stuff happening on personalized products right now which is more on personalized media and engagement so i think 3d uh, is uh, uh, 3d printing is is something which is uh, which is pretty underrated and underused right now it'll definitely grow uh, the second thing which will happen is the large dependence on two or maybe three at most um, uh, you know partners or aggregators will further you know uh, the long tail will the share of the long tail will grow on on media digital media uh, the third one is that the you're saying players apart from google and meta will grow yeah so there That's is what yeah so there are people who are going to be more on the niches which will grow so somebody from sports will grow big somebody from uh, you never know the way things are going with the and what is the your point of view on the ipl uh, broadcast right and digital rights prices i, I think uh, it is good for the consumers as long as there are people competing for the rights uh, and i'm sure the value is there and they will uh, it's going to be tough but i'm sure there are marketers who will who will bite into it uh, the third one that's a very diplomatic answer kolet <laughs> you're my friend so that's why i can ask you i know you stay away from controversy in every way but uh, you know because you've been you were with lg you've seen how lg built the brand in a very short by burst of advertising cricket was big uh, then you was a D, you were the ceo of dth uh, business at dish tv you worked at voltas now you're here uh, clearly you know understand media and you understand the rights uh, i i was writing a piece and i didn't write it eventually on the cricket rights uh, and i texted ashish basin and he said anurag cricket pe to kabhi hindustan mein paisa lose hota hi nahi koi bhi value pe so that's the view of somebody like ashish basin so i said there has to be some merit if he's saying that so clearly uh, some people mirror the view you have shared but some people view that this is just good for pcci it's not necessarily good for people who who are very consumer business professionals entrepreneurs who really overpaid for it so <coughs> i i'll give you another angle here i feel that uh, uh, the the cricket rights always when they're sold every year they're sold at a much higher price and every year we all feel that it's beyond the reach of the marketing uh, 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 marketing budgets that lot of marketers have but every year they turn out in profit fomo Uh, so driving. yeah so uh, and every time there are people who will who will bite into it and i'll tell you why because it's not one brand which is going for three decades or two decades earlier there are brands where you know you mentioned where i have worked and and we would go and compete then there are brands which came into some other category and then the digital brands there a lot of vc money there's a lot of private equity money which came in and you saw all the digital brands spending the money however i see a little lull in in a year or two and that could be only not that the marketers don't want to spend the money and they don't see value of course they see the value the kind of eyeballs it generates nobody nothing else can the only lull which might come is because of the the cash crunch uh, which is temporary probably a year liquidity. or you have liquidity stuff and which is because of you know global liquidity issues and inflation issues so that could spoil the party temporarily however in the long run it's never expensive okay uh, we'll take two questions if there are any question ankit you want to ask salil any question can we get a mic to ankit he is not a loud punjabi from delhi he is from bangla 
Yeah, you. It's better. Uh, so, Salil, uh, I think uh, on the last point, which you have raised around liquidity, which I think uh, it's a uh, it's a fact now. Uh, but uh, while you said party is over, but I think don't you think? It's I, I never said party is over. Party you can is call it disrupted. At disrupted temporary. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, while I see it as a rationalization of that party, right? So there was a lot of irrational decision making that was happening because of excessive liquidity. So don't you think the rationalization is important for the ecosystem to be sustainable, right? While it's growing, it needs to grow sustainably instead of uh, crazily, right? No, no, I fully agree with you. And we're not talking about cricket rights here. Okay. I was talking about that party. This one, uh, the other one that you are hinting is also temporarily disrupted. Uh, because uh, it will it will separate, as they say, men from boys, uh, more stronger business models yeah. from the ones which are only dependent on cash burn, mm -hmm. uh, which is good. Uh, and this is always the time to build up stronger, fundamentally strong businesses, right? Uh, but it's the 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 you know you know that things swing to extreme. Mm -hmm. When 2008 happened, 2009 was a bumper time. And nobody at 2008 time thought Predicted that, that it will happen in six months, one year it time. Will come back so fast. So you know the 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 community, the, the bankers and the and the financial community, always swings to extremes. Very optimistic, very pessimistic. So you don't know when it will swing back. I think same happened during the COVID downturn as well. Exactly, exactly. We all wrote off things, and suddenly things came back in one quarter. So see, one thing I'll tell you. Uh, India is going to grow. There is no question. And uh, of course, the government can play a positive enabler, uh, but it will grow. It has natural traction. Yeah. It is a market which is the biggest market. It has an aspirational consumer. Uh, the digital transformation in the last year has been accelerated by at least five, if not 10 years. Mm -hmm. And you know, again, I must tell the audience, Ankit uh, is from Bobble.ai and he applied for Business World's 40 under 40 awards, and there's a reason I'm mentioning. And he won, of course. And I was sitting in the jury, and you know, one of the jury members post everyone's presenting this. Uh, asked, we discussed the person who presented, mm -hmm. and he said, you know, Bobble dot AI is possibly a zero to one company, yeah, yeah. either zero or one, if you know that concept. But Peter thinks it'd be very big because you're trying to change the basis of a business, right? Yeah. It's a new. So clearly, for the first time, look at UPI. You know, I used to say that in India, we don't build product companies. I mean, UPI is a product company for, I mean, right? Look at ONDC, read the latest cover of Business World. Uh, we have four pioneering people on the cover and who in various streams are doing a scale which is huge. ONDC will be the UPI of e-commerce. So I think in India, finally, the scale for everything is bigger. Yeah. So that will sustain, in my view, the numbers, possibly. Uh, so that's my view. Uh, one more question, if there's somebody has a question. The lady there, can we get a mic to her? We have Mr. Ajay Sharma of Badenath post this, uh, and I'm sure it'll be an, it will be an exciting session. Tell us what is your name uh, and what company do you work for? We don't know about how much money in your Swiss bank account that you can tell us privately. Hello, Mr. Batra. This is, <clears throat> this is Kamna Hazrati. I started my career with you with Style Candy. Uh, oh, yeah, you're <laughs> Kamna, you right, right. Catching right, up after 13 yes, years. Yes, 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 now I, I can, yes, I'm meeting you after 8, 10 years, so yes. 13 years, sir. 13, yes, that's why I don't. <laughs> but good to you. Texted me the other day about the link not working, yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Finally worked and I am finally Yes, alive. I sent it to Tanvi or somebody <laughs> in the team, yes. Go ahead, Kamna, go ahead, ask the question. Uh, hi, Mr. Kapoor. Uh, so, you know, in your conversation, you were hinting quite a couple of times that it's, it's, it has been a tricky time for all of the marketeers, um, you know, how things have changed uh, in the last two years. You were also hinting how, uh, you know, how sh the women are purchasing now. So in your field, uh, I understand the shift from offline to digital, but could you please hint more on, you know, uh, do you see, is this a shift on maybe price wars? Do you see there is more local brands? Uh, India has also awakened up to, you know, local made in India brands. So we are nowhere, you know, no more uh, just buying maybe a Reebok or a, or a Nike. We are also happy to buy a Campus Sutra uh, or a Campus Shoe, right? So uh, in that case, you know, what, what all do you think, like not only just the shift from offline to digital, but also, you know, maybe more nuances or maybe more details into it of how do you think that that shift is really happening? 
as, as I said earlier, the shift is not only significant on what people are tracking usually, which is the purchase, actual purchase offline versus online. I think the initiation, the development, the comparison, the evaluation, all that is very, very critical for every brand. I think it's more critical, and that has shifted drastically to online because everybody has uh, a, 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 you know, a device in the hand throughout, and we spend our lives more with this than with anything else. And um, uh, I was looking I at. I hope not. <laughs> you do. So, 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 so that throws a lot of data, and that's the way you make a lot of decisions, right? So this is this component is very critical for all the marketers because the entire evaluation and selection and everything is happening while the consumer is going through the digital journey. That component has really not sunk in so deeply because. Uh, all the stuff that you want to promote offline is, a is actually getting shifted to online. That is going to be more important. And, and of course, we will have the homegrown brands and there will be various other things which will come up. More and more, uh, the, the, I would say the integration and getting digital into our lives is already happening and that will continue. That degree and that quotient will keep on increasing. Okay. Uh, I think, Mr. Salil, I must tell you, Salil, I do spend time on the phone. Um, I haven't, I've looked at my phone only once in this whatever time of conversation and since my friend Mr. Vaith Shukla spends much more time than me on the phone, I feel very happy. I spend much lesser time than him, though I try not compare, but, but you know, on a serious note, uh, I think all, we started Exchange for Media 21 plus years back to build a B2B e-commerce company and my vision at Style Candy, we closed it, it's not our lifestyle to be up in the night after 11 p.m. Uh, mostly. Uh, but I told you that fashion e-commerce will happen, and you know, when I started at 13, if we had persisted, it possibly. But we feel in exchange for media, to the time to build a B2B e-commerce business. Exchange for media is called exchange for media, not because we wanted to build a media business, because we were building a B2B marketplace for media, for buying and selling of media time and space. And we were pretty a ahead of time 21 years back. Uh, but I tell now all the time to build it is now. One, we have relationships with every stakeholder. Uh, second, I think the time in the environment is there. So the whole, we had envisaged the whole value chain. Ki research ka bhi humne time se tie up kiya. Ki if you want to run a research spot, you can do a SaaS. You pay only for that spot. You want to then buy, you want to do fulfillment. Because just to give you, just to, I think in e-commerce there is natural traction. Today, you know, my parents were 80 plus search. You know, and then they get someone to buy. Uh, my father still likes to go to bank, but you know, they have adapted to digital fairly well compared to pre-COVID. So I think everything, I'm trying to recruit someone, I'll go, up, go to LinkedIn, see. I'm trying to buy something, I invest a fair bit in angel investing, and you know, I try to find out about the product reviews. I go, see, how many product reviews? I invested in a coffee company called Beanley. You know, I, Again, I like the product and I know the founders, so I did. But I look at online has become a very important part, you know, uh, of everything we do, to taking feedback. But for a lot of consumers, that's the starting point. They still want to visit the store. In case of cars, they still want to do a test drive. In case of homes, though people buying homes without visiting has grown, but people still want to do that physical loop closure, so to say, see the product. So that hasn't changed. No, so uh, uh, just add to that, uh, I think uh, some years ago, somebody would have told me that I'll buy my running shoes online. I would have I would have said, no, I want to wear them, I want to use them and then see if I'm comfortable. But now I buy online. I never thought fashion will be really big online, but people just order Yeah, there stuff. was a site called boo.com. Those are yeah. In 21 years back in UK, it shut down. It was the first fashion website. Uh, it shut down for business reason and maybe it was also ahead of time. But I think cars... I used to say touch and feel product to picking any. Kapre to online picking any. I used to say. Go be boo.com example. We are wrapping up. Yeah, but so cars and, and even the homes one day with all the VR being thrown in, if you have a trusted builder and if you have a good quality VR, you might not want to visit. Yeah, it, it is growing, it is. as I said. So please give Mr. Salil Kapoor a big round of applause. I don't <laughs> buy sports shoes. I like my friends to gift me sports shoes. Sure. I have a friend from my school who's the CEO of a, the best shoe company 
the most expensive shoe company. He's actually Naval's classmate. He's two batches junior to me. And so, you know, I always wait for him to gift me shoes. So, uh, <laughs> that's a cue to you, Salil. You have a consumer durables brand. So, thank you. I must say thank you in advance. But give Mr. Salil Kapoor a big round of applause.